Oh, and we also have Mob Psycho 100 Ray Ray Reagan up here, which I think is a one-shot based on one of the characters. Okay, next we have Mobile Suit Gundam 1, 3, and 6. Uh, we started picking this up pretty recently. This is a series for my partner. He hasn't started reading it yet, but he'd like to pick it up in the next few weeks, I think. As so we have Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin Volume 1. This is another one that is a series of my partner's. He's not been rushing to pick these up because they're quite expensive, but I know he said that he wants to shortly. As we have Momo 1 and 2, and I think that is up to date. I haven't started reading these yet. I think the covers look absolutely gorgeous though. Especially this blue, such a wonderful shade of blue. I have no reason that I've not read it yet though. Look at the price difference between volume one and volume two, and they were only bought like a couple of months apart, isn't that upsetting? Next they have Monotone Blue, and this is a one-shot. It's a uh, kind of a BL romance between anthropomorphic characters, so cat guy, reptile guy. And the premise is this guy has joined a new school and he has this like really lovely blue tail and he keeps it hidden because it draws too much attention, he's really shy. And this awkward guy kind of befriends him and they kind of start to develop more. It's actually quite an interesting read. It, I don't think it was like outstanding outstanding, but it was definitely an interesting read. I don't- I would recommend this if you're looking for like a one-shot BL sort of se uh, series. Next we have Monster Boo, Monster Abo, Monster Boo Volume 1, and I think I'm behind on this, I think Volume 2 is out. So the Plastic Rub series, I haven't read it yet. I kept seeing it, like every time I went manga shopping it was always like front and centre, so I was like, I need to grab it. Next we have Monster 1 to 9 and this is complete, this is really recently up to date. Uh, up to date, complete. We've been missing volume 7 for a long long time. My partner's been reading it and he really really loved it. He read I think the first three or first four and then a whole bunch were out of stock and we had to wait. He finally managed to finish, managed to find some of the other volumes he was missing, just the only one that eluded us was volume 7, but we managed to grab it really really recently. So this is a series he's gonna start picking up again. He was kind of waiting to um, make sure he had all of them before he ate, so he didn't have to stop again. What have we got around here? We have Monster Guild, The Dark Lords, No Good, Comeback 1 and 2, and uh, Volume 3 might be out. I've gotten both of these volumes for 4 99 from different places. I haven't read it yet, but it sounds like my kind of thing. Lighthearted fantasy, I'm assuming. As we have Monster Hunter, Flash Hunter. Flash Hunt, Monster Hunter Flash Hunter at 1 to 4 and 8, 9, 10. So missing 5, 6, 7. This is a really hard series to find. I don't know if it's still in print or not. So my, these again are my part. I've got a lot of series that my partner's on this shelf. He loves Monster Hunter games and he's really been enjoying reading these. Of course, he has only read up to volume 4. If anyone knows of any not horrendously priced 5, 6, 7, do let me know. As so we have Monster, Monster Muzzle Me, and I think we've got 1 to 4, and then 5, 7, 10 here. I have actually re watched some of the anime for this and it is so degenerate. I thought it was so silly and amusing. I was like, I really definitely need to read the manga. I've read the first couple of volumes of the manga. It just still hasn't gone past what I've watched in the anime. I think there's like 17 volumes of this. I don't know if it's complete 17, but there are at least 17. Just basically a guy keeps having to house all these monster girls that seem to want to bang him, but it's illegal for him to do so. But they really, they're really determined to do it, and that well, that's been the plot of what I know of it so far. As we have Monster Soul One and Two, which is complete. This is a two-volume series by uh, the guy who did Fairy Tale in Zero, and it's kind of about a group of monsters. It kind of are just out and about trying to have fun and not get into trouble. It's kind of the plot of it all. It's not too bad. It's it could have probably even managed to go to like five volumes, maybe, but. Actually not too bad, especially since I got them both secondhand for a good price. Next we have Monster Girls Wrestling 1-4, to and I think it might actually be complete at four volumes. I think my partner has read all of them, whereas I've only read volume one. It is not very good. It is really confusing because of the artwork. Basically the premise is, uh, literally as it says, the Monster Girls who wrestle. But because of like the wrestling and the types of monsters they are, what's happening is always really confusing. Like especially when they are actually wrestling, you can't tell what part is what. Is it a knee? Is it a shoulder? Is it a tentacle? You just don't know. And it's yeah, it's very much showing as much boob 
bum as t and tentacle as we can. As we have monster, monster, oh dear, monsters on the mind. They've all started with monster for quite a while, haven't they? Monthly girls, Nozaki Kun, one, two, and twelve. I'd seen a lot of people on Instagram say this was actually pretty good, so I picked up volume one a long, long while ago, and volume two. I think they might have got them together. I don't remember. Uh, and I have read volume one, and I did quite enjoy it. I got twelve discounted or second hand. I don't remember. I think 12 was up to date when I picked it up. There might be a 13th now. I don't know. It is a uh, four coma, I think. Yeah. And that often puts a lot of people off, but it is fun. I do quite like it. It's about a guy who draws a manga. Does he draw a romance manga? And there's this girl who has a crush on him and she like wants to spend more time with him and he misunderstands that as be his manga assistant and then things ensue. As we have Moon and Sun 1 and 2 and this is up to date. Oh, go away. This is a BL title. I haven't read it yet. It's meant to be quite... It's one good spanking all it will take. So I'm expecting to read a bunch of spanking when I get to it. As we have Moriarty the Patriot 1 to 9 and this is up to date. Actually, I don't think I've read volume 9 yet, have I? Not sure. I've gotten so confused about what I have and haven't read the past couple of weeks, to be honest. But this is based on the Moriarty from Sherlock Holmes. This is a wonderful series. I am a big Sherlock Holmes fan and we used to read like Sherlock Holmes at school and used to read them in my spare time. So this is wonderful to get some in manga form. It can deal with quite dark topics though, so but it is still good, would absolutely recommend. I do like the spines are getting a little brighter. I did think the first so many were quite dark. It's, it's technically a rainbow, but I feel like six has spoilt me. Also, six was a wonderful volume. I've just remembered what that volume was about. That is a wonderful volume. Next we have The Most Heretical Last Boss Queen, volumes one and two, that is up to date. This is another villainess, Isekai. Oh no, one and two are the wrong way around. Yeah, she's been reincarnated into an Otome game. Uh, with, she's still a kid by the end of volume two. I like it when they've aged up a bit. She's kind of like like her her character is a terrible character like a really really terrible character and she's trying to desperately not be like that and like it's quite an extreme version of a terrible villainess i feel but i do enjoy it but it's gonna be a long while till a third one comes out i think there's a light novel for this as well miss koizumi loves ramen noodles one to three and i think that's up to date i don't know if it's complete though basically uh the character koizumi loves ramen and it's just her going around Japan eating different types of ramen. I do warn you that eat, like eating this, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about food. Reading this makes you hungry, like so hungry, and the food all looks so good. So be wary reading it if you're hungry. I can only read it if I've just eaten, but I really, really enjoy it. It's a nice, like, heart slice of life, nothing serious. As we have Multi Mind Mayhem 1 to 5, that is up to date. This seems to just be pushing out volumes really quickly. I'm behind, I've only read the first couple. So this is, it is an isekai, but it's like a different kind of isekai. So this guy has been born and in his head are two other people who have been isekai, like their consciousnesses have been reincarnated in him. So in this one body there is three minds, the original guy, the guy whose body this belongs to, uh, an old samurai and a Japanese school kid, teen dude. And like, so far the plot has been a lot of these two using their expertise to help this guy like do well, come up with inventions, help protect the kingdom. That's been about it to be honest. It's been quite interesting. It's a nice different kind of play on the genre I feel. Muscles are mightier than magic. One, two, and four. This is literally as dumb as it sounds. This guy who's really muscly is trying to prove that he is better than magic. Oh, that is literally it. I read volumes one and two. I am missing volume three. Four might be the final one, or it might be a five volume series. Can't remember. There might also be a light novel. It's not amazing. It's very dumb and silly. And okay, now we've got next, we've got some Mushoku Tensei one to three and six and seven of the spin off Roxy Gets Serious. These I got on sale. And I think my partner bought me these three, I want to say, because he started reading the light novel. I'm not sure I understand the hype just yet for the series but I am only a few volumes in. I know a lot of people don't like it because he's very pervy and he's like a full grown adult in the body of a boy and he pervs on um, women a lot and it's really gross and I feel like this like he ends up with multiple partners. I don't know if that's true or not that's also spoilery apologies. I'm a bit unsure on why all the hype is for this series but 
When I read more, I'll find out. Next we have My Boy 1 to 7 and 8 and 9. So this is a complete series. I haven't finished reading it though. So there's kind of, the plot is kind of that this woman ends up helping look after this kid. I hope that is that like him all grown up. Is that spoiler? Let's find a different cover. You can do this cover. And she just kind of ends up looking after him even though he's not her kid because he's being neglected and she's she lonely. Uh, I hope it doesn't get weird. I hope it keeps its like motherly parental relationship. I think I'm about three or four volumes in. Am I? I can't remember. It was very lovely and wholesome. I got a chunk of these for like five pounds off Amazon because sometimes they just randomly discount volumes. I'm not sure I'd recommend it. It's okay. It's it's lovely so far. Okay, next we have a very wedged in volume that doesn't want to move. There we go. It is My Brain is Different Stories of ADHD and Other de 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 Developmental Disorders. Oh my god. So this is a one shot and it's filled with a whole bunch of short chapters describing different people's real life experiences with uh, developmental disorders. I did it that time. I found this really interesting read as someone who also has um, mental health disorders. I found like a lot of it was almost disturbingly too close to home so I did struggle to read it as well. I actually ended up reading this across like three or four days. I'd read a couple of chapters, read some other manga and then come back to it. I I would say it is a good read. And next we have My Dress Up Darling 1-6 and this is up to date. I like My Dress Up Darling. I really like how much we've learnt about cosplay, about materials and shaping and like makeup and hair. That's been really interesting. I do think I prefer 2.5 dimensional seduction to My Dress Up Darling, but that's not to say I don't, that's not to say I dislike My Dress Up Darling. I think they're both great. I feel like this one's more accessible in general to more people because 2.5 I think is more, even more adult than this if you would believe. I do like it, this is lovely. It's very expensive though nowadays. My Girlfriend's a Geek 1 and 2. I am behind on this. I think this is complete maybe at 4, maybe at 5. I don't know. I've had these in my collection a really, really, really long time and I was like, I'll try and get the other volumes and I saw how much the other volumes go for second hand. I was like, okay, maybe not. I'll hold off then. And I've just not gotten back into it. I picked them up cheap and I thought it sounded neat and that's, that's about it. My Happy Marriage Volume 1 and this is up to date. This is based off a light novel. I really enjoyed this. I know a lot of other people have also really enjoyed this. Basically, this main character has been snubbed by her father and stepmother and basically isn't wanted anymore and she's been shipped off to this guy who apparently is a really tricky fiance. He's been engaged a few times and they've all kind of ended up being cancelled, broken off for various reasons. So it's like, we'll ship her off to the awkward guy. Turns out he's not actually that awkward. A lot of the women were just terrible. She does need somewhere to stay because her dad's like, yeah, you can't come back if it doesn't work out. So she's desperate to actually stay in this engagement and it's just been really wholesome so far he's been like trying to figure out like why someone of noble birth acts the way they do and it's like oh just a dad get some comeuppance next we have my hero academia 1 to 32 which i believe is up to date we have just started a new arc in 32 and i'm quite enjoying it i feel like i started to dip a little around here. Again, I'm probably one of the very few people who wasn't that bothered about the villain arc. I don't know why, just wasn't. I really liked My Hair Academia when they were like in school and doing school things. I feel like it's gotten really, really serious way too quickly. Maybe that's just me. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone else have that opinion, so it might just be me. I do enjoy it still. Also Rainbow Spines. Next we have a whole bunch more My Hair Academia. So we have one to five My Hair Academia Smash, which is a for Coma Gag Manga. I've read the first couple and it basically follows the storyline of My Hero Academia, but if everything was really silly and dumb, it was really, it is a fun read. And then we have My Hair Academia Team Missions 1 and 2, which is up to date, which is kind of just pairing up random characters and putting them in situations to see how they gel together. Also a really fun, lighthearted read. Doesn't release very often though, I mean, I think I've had volume 1 and 2 for over a year now. And then we have My Hero Academia Vigilantes 1 to 13, which is up to date. And this is a spin off. Um, I read only the first couple volumes. I also believe it's complete or complete in soon. It's a bit more gritty than the main series, is my understanding. I also know that there are some tie ins to the main series, which is why I really need to get on and try and read this. Next, we have My East Kai Life 1 to 3, and that is up to date. So, this is about a guy who's East Kai'd 
and it gets an army of slimes and he's very OP. Actually, we'll, we'll do the full title. My East Kai life, I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world. Yeah, so his primary um, character class is like Monster Hunter, Monster Tamer or something, which is how he tames the slimes. And then his second, second, oh my gosh. I've been talking too much. My, his second class is like Sage and he's very OP and second classes aren't common so most people can't see that he has a second one, they can just see he's a monster tamer and they're like, how are you so overpowered if you're just a monster tamer? Ah, uh, It's really fun, really silly, um, probably one of my more favourite ones, uh, like slime based isekai because there was a lot of those. Next we have My Little Monster Volume 2. Again, I picked this up because it was on sale and it's a, vol a series that I've been wanting to try for quite a long while now so I am keeping out for eye out for even cheaper volumes too. Next we have My Love Mix Up 1 to 5 and I am up to date. The main series I believe is complete at 9 volumes. I have only read up to 3 because I read up to 3 and it was like it's complete at 9 and I was like okay and then I'll just read them all once they're out. This is like it reminds me of like a more light heart less serious uh, blue blue period oh my gosh I'm just I've been talking way too much blue flag where so let's turn this sideways so you can see it so she's so she drops a rubber which has his name on it and he grabs it and then he sees him with the rubber with his name on so she drops a rubber with his name on and he grabs it, but he sees him with it, so he thinks that he has a crush on it, on him, but he doesn't want to out her, so he just goes along with it, and it kind of gets a bit weird between them, because like, but kind of in a wholesome way. I definitely enjoyed um, volumes, I think, 2 and 3 way more than volume 1. I am looking forward to binging it all together though. Okay, so we're going to just take a short little break, mainly because... Um, for you, you won't notice any difference at all because, of course, it's just one video. But for me, it has been a week since I last did any recording. I had hoped to finish this shelf so I'd at least be like wrapped up. Unfortunately, it just got all too busy and then I was away for a whole bunch of time. And I need to try and remember which series I was on. So, yeah, the room is a little bit more messy. Like we had some dominoes earlier on. <laughs> There's a bunch of manga over there that I went manga shopping with. That is not going to be in this video. Any manga shopping I've done this past week is going to just sort of be held off and I'll do a haul of what I've picked up but it's not gonna be in this video because I've got all the shelves neat and tidy-ish kinda. Right, let me just try and remember where I was. If we have My Love Story 1 to 13, this is complete. I have read up to, I think, here and then I stopped. No reason. I just forgot to get back to it. This is meant to be really good. It's like really, really popular. I managed to grab a lot of this from, I think, Forbidden Planet in Leeds. They had a good chunk of it and I knew it started to get a bit hard to find so I decided to sweep it up. I think the only one I'd been missing was like volume three and I managed to grab it second hand for actually cheaper than three for two in the end. I love the Rainbow Spines. It is a series I want to binge. Next we have My Lovey Dovey Wife is a Stone Cold Killer 1 and 2. I do think volume three is out so I'm probably behind now. But I don't think this is a very good series. I picked it up because I was like, okay, it's giving me Way of the House Husband vibes. I enjoy that. Pick it up. It's quite boring, gotta be honest. It's similar to like Fly Me to the Moon, where in the main characters get married having never dated. But and then yeah, the main character is an assassin, her and then the husband does like a normal job. It's just it just doesn't have the same kind of charm that Fly Me to the Moon does, and it doesn't have the humour the way the house husband does. So I couldn't recommend the series. Uh, I'm holding out. It's a series I absolutely imagine I'll be able to find secondhand or discounted half price in a store, so I'll, I'm only going to try and pick it up that way. Next we have My Next Life as a Villainess, obviously to do 1 to 3 and... Ow, fall off the stool. And uh, 4 to 7. And also the spin-off, My Next Life as a Villainess, on the verge of Doom 1 to 3, and that is complete. So I absolutely adore this series. I haven't yet read... Um, have I read Volume 7 of this? Yeah, I think I have read Volume 7 of this. Yeah, I think I have. So, My Next Life as a Villainess was the very first Villainess series I picked up. To be fair, in the West, it probably was for a lot of people. Um, based on, like, times and looking at release dates, this might have been the first one that came out in the West. It was definitely one of the first anime, Villainess anime, that became available. I remember picking this up on my birthday, like, five years ago, in Leeds, and I saw the title, and I was like, that's such a silly long title. What? Well, with this silly long title? 
Little did I know that I would become obsessed. <laughs> really, I enjoy it. It is very light-hearted. It's, I mean, it does have serious moments, but in terms of it, it's, it's a light romance serious moment. Oh my gosh, that's quite a bit lower. These are quite expensive though. I tend to try and pick them up not in store, though I did pick up some of these in store. So the side story is basically in the main series, she regains her memories when she's a kid and she's trying to overcome leading a route. Basically, she'd want to try and end up on a route where she doesn't die, and she's like, okay, my best option is I'll become exiled, so I'll try and learn some skills so when I'm exiled I can still live and be, you know, not die and stuff. But she ends up being a really nice person, everyone loves her, and none of those routes are even a possibility. On the verge of doom, she recovers her memories just in the nick of time. Basically, the, it's based on an Otome game, and it's just as she's starting to make fun of the main character in the Otome game, she's like, regains her memories just at that very moment, and she's like, oh shit, I don't got much time to turn my life around. Uh, and that's it. And it is only three volumes. I have definitely not read volume three yet. I haven't had it that long. There is another side story, which is like Girl's Patch or Flower Patch or something like that. Well, that's been a really expensive volume anywhere I've seen it. It's always been more than £10, so I've just not picked it up. But I really, really, really want to because I love the series. Would I say it's one of the best villainesses? Probably not. But it was my first. You never forget your first. As we have... <sighs> My repair skill became a versatile cheat, so I think I'll open a weapon shop volume one. This was a very average series. I think it's just a fantasy. It's not an isekai. And yeah, this guy realizes that his repair skill is a bit OP, so he opens a weapon shop. I don't even remember if much else happens. Uh, was surprised. This is not a plastic wrap, but there is some nudity in it. If that, be wary if that's not your sort of thing. Um, take notice if it is, I guess. Not that amazing. Also, I don't think they're releasing another volume to like May, so by the time the next volume comes out, I will not remember a thing that's happened. Next we have My Room is a Dungeon Rest Stop, one to three, and I've read, I think I've read all three of these, um, but I am behind on volumes. I think there's five or six out at the moment. Basic premise is this guy has moved into a new flat in Tokyo, and if he goes out of one door, he ends up in a dungeon. If he goes out the other door, he ends up in Tokyo. That's, the, yeah, that's the premise. His, where he opens up in the dungeon is like a good, decent way into the dungeon. It's not like near the top, it's like a good way through, hence treating it like a rest stop. And he opens it and he finds a woman and he like takes her in. Unfortunately, the woman isn't able to go out into Tokyo where he sees a door or a window, I can't remember which, she just sees a wall and she just walks into a wall. She can't go into Tokyo. So he's been feeding her, showing her the joys of hot water. This always seems to be a big thing. And I think there's some more, some more women have turned up, and there's also a slime. It, it, in terms of like harems, it's quite mild, but it is still, it's definitely a harem. Harem? 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 Actually, I have my senpai is annoying one and three. I have only read volume one, obviously, I don't have volume two. Again, quite a pricey series. It's like partial colour ish. It's like some bits of it. Some colours. Not some bits of it, there's like some colours. Quite interesting, it's... it reminds me a little bit of like... So the main character reminds me of... oh my god, get back on the shelf! Of like Nagatoro, a bit... a bit bullish, a bit... yeah. And she kind of has a crush on her senpai. It's very sweet, again, it's just it's a pricey series so I don't rush to pick it up. I got this one on sale at Blackwell's, which is why I got it. There's like six or seven of them out now, so I am quite behind. My status as an assassin obviously exceeds the heroes one to three, up to date. I think volume four comes out next year, but it means it's gonna have been like two and a half years between volumes. Again, this reminds me a little bit of like Arifaretta. Guy's full class has been isekai'd and they've all been given powers and skills and his um, class is an assassin and things are going weird. Like a lot of his classmates are doing strange things, dubious things, and he's like, what is going on? And he tries to figure it out. And he's very OP as an assassin. I was, I absolutely adored volume one. Volumes two and three were a bit okay. Actually, no, two was good too. Volume three, yes. I was, I was much less interested. My wife has no emotion volume two. I picked it up on sale. I again don't have much else to say until I get volume one. My youth romantic comedy is wrong as expected at comic 1, 3, 14, and 17. I haven't started reading this. It, and my understanding is, because there is a light novel, 
is it's meant to be a very like quintessential silly slice of life kind of series um, but there's quite a lot of volumes and they're not particularly easy to find uh, so all of these i've gotten second hand or on on sale as you can see really just like the color of this one it's just like mustard this uh, look at this isn't this so neat it's from my sister i think for christmas one year next we have mysterious girlfriend x one i got this from world of books I think for six pounds maybe. I really like these short stubby vertical volumes. I don't know why. I'm just, I absolutely love them. They're so cute. Like um, Rising of Shield Hero light novels are this exact same size as well. And I just think, oh, they're so adorable. Actually quite a lot of the Seven Seas airship light novels of this size, like Trapped in a Dating Sim. I haven't started reading it, but I hear it is very good. Next we have Nana, Volume 1. Now I always said that I would only start picking this series up if I could buy it 3 for 2, and guess what? I bought it as part of a 3 for 2. As I was in Travelling Man, and I was about to pay, and I saw this by the checkout, and they don't often put mine by the checkout unless it's like a big thing, and they had a stack of this, and I was like, oh no, now I gotta make another 3 for 2! And I remember I was talking to the person at the till, and they said, yeah, it's taken us ages to get this volume so i think from seeing people in the us get restocks of volume one i think it's taken people in the uk i think the gap between people in the us and me getting this was about six to seven months to give you an idea of how long it takes reprints to sometimes make their way over here so i will now continue to pick up the rest of that but i will only pay three for two prices so i'm gonna just keep an eye out for restocks to appear in traveling man because a lot of other series like banana fish has also started restocking so I'm hoping I'll see more Nana too. Okay, next we have Naruto. One, two, two, 72. And that is complete. So Naruto was another one of the first manga series in my collection. As I said earlier, I got Love Hina 1 to 3 and Naruto 1 and 2. The number of times I've read this volume, I it, it must it potentially is verging on hundreds. I have read one one piece oh my gosh, I've also read one piece a lot, but that is not this series. I have read Naruto so many times. I love the series. It's and it's so wild looking back at like how much the art has changed compared to Baruto. Baruto I just don't think looks as great as this. But maybe that's that's just my personal opinion. I do absolutely adore Naruto. And yeah, that first arc up to about here. Is this when the first arc finishes? Absolutely adore. Also love this volume with Sakura being all badass. I didn't realise how much hate there was for Sakura until like I went on the internet. <laughs> but my favourite character in Naruto is this man right here, Rock Lee. Absolutely adore him. The fact that he's the character that got a spin-off series. Oh my gosh. Rock Lee and his Ninja Pals. What an amazing show. Absolutely love it. My sister loves it as well. We had it on DVD. We used to sing the OP together. Very sad that they never printed the manga in English though. They printed some of the other chibi stuff the Sasuke one at least but they didn't do the Rock Lee one. Very disappointed but I would absolutely recommend the Rock Lee and his Ninja Pals um, SD series. It's dumb. It's great. <laughs> ah, some noises aren't there? I mean I've got Rock Lee. Oh, look at him kicking like Okay, so yeah, we've got Naruto all the way up to here. I remember being in uni when this volume came out and I actually ordered it and it was close to retail. But I, I used to let myself off if it was the final volume of a series because there weren't too many series that I like was reading at the time. It was mostly the long running shonens. Like I think for a time it was like One Piece, Naruto, Bleach and like what else was I reading? Like One Punch Man? There wasn't that many I was reading, it was all the long stuff. So when it was like, this is the final one, I'm just ordering it. Uh. Next we have Naruto, the seventh Kage and the Scarlet Spring. This is a one shot, it kind of is just a story about, it kind of seems to set up for Boruto, which shows Naruto as Hakage. Spoilers, spoilers by the way, rip. <laughs> Uh, shows Naruto grown up, shows more Boruto, and sets up all the characters really. And then we have Chibi Sasuke Shogun Legend 1 3, and that is complete. This is what I was talking about, where it's just very silly chibi stuff, and it's absolutely hilarious. I love it. It is a very particular type of humour, though. There is a good chance it might not be our kind of thing. Oh, there's a Christmas chapter. I don't know how well, how easy these volumes are to get now. I understand that this completed and then they started a Baruto one. I don't know if that's getting an English print. 
and I don't know if that's true or not, but that would be great. I would love that too. Next we have, how do you pronounce this? Necromance? 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 I don't know. 1 to 5, and this is series complete. Uh, I didn't pick up 4 and 5 all that long ago, so I've not read it yet. My understanding is it's a fantasy where, like, the guys died and they're trying to resin, I think. That's that's literally all I know. It's complete at five. Next we have Natsumi's Book of Friends. What have we got here? 1, 2, 5, 9, 10, 11, 17, 26, 27. And one of them's a library copy. I think actually this one's also a library copy. Yeah. So I do want to read this series, especially since my sister's told me that it's like one of the very few series that she's read, like online. It's like, I knew she read One Piece and Naruto and like Death Note maybe and then she was like, oh yeah, and Natsumi's Book of Friends. Like, what? What? That's the series I can't easily pick up, Nave. So I am really trying to pick this up now because she reads so little, it'd be really nice to read something that she's also read, but it's a very hard to find series. It's Shoujo B. It's a long running Shoujo B. Oh, I dread, dread to think. I've had one and two for a long time and I'm now trying to stay up to date, which is why I've got these two. And then I've just picked up random ones when I found them second hand. Next we have New Game, and we are 1 to 9 and 11 and 12, missing 10, and I think 13 might be the final volume. I love this series so much. So this is it's the, probably the closest manga series to the job that I do, basically. So our main character here, whose name eludes me, Eoba? Eoba? Is that her name? Eoba? Uh, she has graduated in 3D modeling character design and she goes to work at a video game company designing characters. But like, so in the first couple of volumes, it's predominantly sort of 3D modeling characters we see. We see a, a sort of that, those sort of characters. And then we start to see other people who work at the company, such as developers, testers, project managers, and yeah, I think she I think she works in test and she's a dev. So for those that don't know, by day I am a software developer. So yeah, it was so nice reading this because like some of the things about like project deadlines and testing, especially because I also work in test and QA, just like tickled me so much because it was just like I have said this before in meetings. Ah. Oh. Though I must say this is horrendously unrealistic considering it is a software development kind of company to make video games and literally the entire cast is women as a woman is software engineering i can tell you that is not how it is <laughs> i remember at at school during my a level when i did computer science in the class of like 11 i was the only female and then i remember at uni out of 200 students i think there was like five women and then like some women went off to do other degrees like psychology or american studies some came back from year in industry but we pretty much stayed around five six seven there weren't many of us so this suggesting there's an entire company just filled with women making games is such a lie it'd be great but it's a lie this is also for coma which i know does put some people off but it is great and it does still have like a rolling story to it. For example, I think during this volume they're like trying to create a game, they're trying to rush a game out for release. I can't remember, they all started to blur together because I read a bunch of it at once. I believe I read up to six, maybe my partner's up to date and then we're hunting down volume 10 and then eventually 13. 13 might be out though. Not sure. But they are also really thin, which is sad. Next we have Newgate 1 to 4 and 5 to 10, which is ish up to date. Don't know when 11 is out. Newgate, I would describe having read the first two volumes. It very much reminds me of Sword Art Online, but it starts at the end of the Aincrad arc, and instead of getting out of the game, he's still stuck in it. Everyone else gets out apart from him. And he like falls asleep and wakes up and it's a hundred years later in the game and all the characters and the NPCs and stuff are a lot more real. And they talk about the days of like the all powerful heroes a hundred years ago and they all suddenly disappeared and he's like, they didn't disappear, they all logged out. So I am interested in that. Is an isekai, is fun. I've got a lot of these actually quite cheap. A lot of them I've gotten for like six pounds. Which is nice. That says ten ninety nine. Did I pay six pounds? What's three for two and ten ninety nine? Six pounds something. 
it has six pounds something. And then some of them I have gotten for um, six pounds off like black oils on sale or something. Has been fun so far. It's nothing amazing though. It is so like sold out line though. Niche we have Nichju Nichju Nichju. Um, I apologize for all my butchered pronunciation. One, two, ten, and I, th this was complete, but apparently eleventh an eleventh volume has been published in Japan or is being published in Japan. So I had marked this as complete on my spreadsheet, and I have to unmark it as complete. That makes me very sad. This is a really dumb, silly slice of life high school series. I read the first, I think, three volumes, and it was amazing. And like, there's a whole bunch of gifts that I have seen around on the internet, and it turns out they're all from this. Like, the principal suplexing a deer, or reindeer, turns out it's from this, and it's just so silly and great. And there's like, like a, a, a robot that's like trying to pretend she's not a robot, and everyone just pretends they're not a robot. Very, very light-hearted, very lovely. Does have a box set, I believe, if that interests you. Well, it'll be a box set with just these 10, it won't have 11 in it. Next we have Nisekoi. So 1 to 25, apart from volume 8, which eludes me, I've been hunting for volume 8 for so long, so many years, and I'm not convinced it exists. Every time I go to a new store that I've not been to, straight to N, do they have number 8? I did hear some people say that the series is getting a full reprint though next year, so... Hopefully as part of that full reprint they'll have a two volume eight so I could finally get the last one. So I read up to volume four and then I had I was missing quite a lot of volumes. I actually got quite a lot of these second hand. Fortunately my volume eighteen is a bit damaged at the bottom. Is it quite yeah, it's quite damaged on the bottom. Um which I hadn't realised until I got home. But never mind. No biggie. It's not it's actually okay inside the volume. Um, but yeah, I like realized I was missing a whole bunch of volumes and I was trying to grab them all and I was grabbing them slowly and I was like, okay, I'm still missing volume 8. I'll just wait till I get volume 8. Just wait till I get volume 8. Just wait till I get volume 8! Okay, three years later. Two years later? When did I start picking up? Maybe 2020. And next we have No Guns Life. We have 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So yeah, I am missing 1, 2, and 4. And 13, though I'm not sure if 13 is out in the UK yet. 13 is the final volume in the series. I picked this up mainly for my partner. I'd seen some people describe it as like cyberpunk-esque and he absolutely adores cyberpunk so I was like maybe I'll enjoy it. But obviously we don't have volume 1 or volume 2 or volume 4 so he, he's like I'm not picking it up yet. Well, obviously you kind of don't have volume 1. As we have No Game No Life 1 and 2. I don't know if, if this is complete, I was seeing mixed things online and I don't remember the ending of volume 2, but the light novel is way 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 longer, but these, yeah. I've had these two for a while, it is a very weird isekai, I know there's a lot of mixed thoughts on this considering there's a very questionable relationship between a brother and sister, and the sister seems to, I think she's underage and all the statues and all the merch for her is very like, this isn't appropriate for an underage character. The premise was semi-interesting, playing games in an isekai world, there's so much weirdness to do with it. But like, the sister is really pretty, she's got such gorgeous hair, the colouring in the series is amazing, but yeah, there's all the other stuff. <laughs> Next we have No Longer Hair in Volume 1, that is up to date, the Volume 2 might be out-ish around now. I didn't really like this one, I didn't like the main character. She just was a bit... she just wasn't very nice. I felt so bad for like all the other women characters in the series, particularly the one that... So basically she has a crush or is like obsessed with her childhood friend and her childhood friend's a bit of a player and in her head she's like, it's okay, I'm the childhood friend, he'll come back to me, we're meant to be long term, it's okay. And then he gets a girlfriend that is like a nice girl and they're really serious and she's lovely and the childhood friend's really happy and you know, the friend isn't happy because it's like, well no, he's meant to be mine and he's only meant to date shitty women and she's just not very nice about it. So I hope she improves. I wasn't, yeah, not my kind of thing. It's just very bitchy. And next we got one, two, six, and fifteen of no matter how you look at it, it's you guys. Well, I'm not popular. Oh my God, we're like really crouching down. I'm like so. I'm like cr lying on the floor at the moment. These are really thin volumes. That makes me a bit sad. Basically, our main character. Let me pull the volume out. 
Our main character isn't very popular and it's everyone's fault but hers. Um, but she does start to make some friends. And I think that's pretty much the premise of the series. I'm not very far in reading it. I've only got one and two before I hit gap. Oh, I'm doing that. I'm feeling lazy. Don't tell anyone, okay? No matter what you say, Furry Chan is scary. So I believe I got both of these on sale. I can't remember. Where I got oh, don't focus on the lights. Where did I get? I know I got Vine 2 on sale. Yeah, hold on. So uh, apparently it's like a. She looks scary, but she isn't scary. Yeah, Slice of Life High School. I'll get to it when I get to it. And we have number six, one to nine, and that is complete. Now, actually, I got most of these secondhand, would you believe? And all are on Blackwells, all for like 50% of retail price. I'm very excited. I adore the spines. These are gorgeous spines, and I really can't wait to read it. I only got volume nine a couple, um, about a month ago, so I haven't. I was like, I'm holding off because it's a short series. And I'm really, really excited to read it. It's meant to be really good. Next we have Norigami, 1 to 21, and oh, we're on the floor, 22 to 24. And that is up to date, though I think I might not have actually read 24. Oh dear. Love Norigami. Uh, I binged a whole chunk of it. I remember I was sick in like 2017, 2018, and I binged a whole bunch of it and absolutely fell in love with the series. It is based around... Japanese gods and a human is like something went wrong and she's kind of like half oh what's the word I don't think yokai is the word but she's like half on the far shore and half on earth and she's now she ends up like running around with this god a bit well high jinx and more serious jinx ensue it definitely starts off a bit more light-hearted and at the moment it's very serious there is a lot of heavy topics that you didn't, I didn't feel like were going to happen in the first bit of the series, and it's just gotten heavier and heavier and heavier. Not for the faint of heart, I feel. I, I, it's one of the few series that's really made me sad reading it. Especially, was it volume? Was it volume 22 that made me really sad? Mm, not sure. I need to read volume 24. Goodness me, it doesn't release very often. Ow. It doesn't release very often. It's like once a year, maybe less than that. Then we have Noragami Stray Gods. Now, this is numbered volume 1 but all I could find is there is only one volume and then it's... I couldn't see if it was cancelled on hiatus or what I'm not sure if there's another one it's basically just silly light-hearted side stories it's a very fun read if you like Noragami and you want to see something happy you see the characters happy I'd recommend this I don't know how hard it is to find I got mine second hand uh, next we have Not Your Idol 1 and 2 this was given to me by Himika as part of our exchange I quite enjoyed this and then I got to the end of volume 2 and I was like, okay, when's volume 3? What do you mean it's on hiatus? Blast you! But this was this was a good read, but I would potentially try not to get into it just because it's on hiatus and it's been on hiatus for such a long time. I don't know if it's going to come back. I believe it might, is it due to illness? I think it's due to illness. Next we have Now Loading, and this is a one-shot, and it's a GL one-shot, and I have not managed to get around to it yet. I believe it's a, set in a video game company again. Yes, I think it is. Uh, this was repeatedly recommended to me, and I saw it second-hand for, I think, four or five pounds. I was like, well, let's just grab it and see what it's like. But I have not yet read it. As so we have the NPCs in this village game, must be real, one to three, and this is up-to-date. This isn't an isekai, but it is, like... So this guy is like a neat, he's not doing anything and he is sent a video game and he starts playing it and it basically he plays God and looks after this village of people but the people feel a bit too real like the way they interact and respond to his actions is a bit too real and there's also a point where they start like leaving things to send to God and they manage to get to him in the post and he's like what? It's a bit weird, but it's like it's actually quite heartwarming because it's sort of like he wants to earn money to be able to buy things to help look after their village, and it's like turning him into a better person because he wants to be able to look after the village. So it's like it's almost a part of it. it. Almost doesn't matter too much if it's real or not because it's helping him improve. But there's also some really weirdness about it. There is a light novel, and I think the light novel is complete three volumes, which means the manga probably is going to be like. I don't know, manga is usually two to three a light novel. 
So probably between six and nine, I guess. At a wild guess, I have no idea though. Next we have Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season 1 to 8, and this is complete. And I absolutely love this series, would definitely recommend. This is what I feel like is one of the best representations of high school girls in manga that I have read, ever. Because I feel a lot of times it's just the girls are very, like, shy, and I need to sort out the gimbal so I don't lose my arm. The girls are very shy, they're very timid, holding hands is very shy, whereas this series talks a lot about sexuality, growing up, learning about who you are and what you want, and it just feels so real, and I actually really like the ending. And again, there's not many series where I enjoy the ending, and this is definitely one of them. There's conflict, there's diff a different range of characters. I would definitely recommend. Absolutely lovely. And realistic. I think that's one of my favourite things. It just, it just felt real. Like, I felt what the characters were going through. It felt like I could actually believe high schoolers would go through this, especially women. I feel women are always unfairly depicted. Would recommend. Also, look at this rainbow. Look at these colours. How could you not want these sort of colours in your collection? Okay, next we have One Piece. And we have on this shelf of 1 to 26, and I'm gonna have to stand up for the rest, so we'll talk a little bit about One Piece while I'm sat on the floor. <laughs> so, the very first volume of One Piece that I owned was volume 24. This was the very first volume of One Piece I owned. So back in the day, when I was 15 and started reading manga, I did read some naughtily scans, to see if I liked the series and then would potentially think about grabbing it. But I also didn't know anything about anything back then. The thought of like manga always being physical, I didn't understand. I also didn't really understand the difference between manga and graphic novels or like comics. I was 15. And I remember there was a store near my, in my town and they did books for two pounds each. And they had a selection of manga. In hindsight, I should have gone ape. But I was only just starting to pick stuff up and I wasn't picking much up. But they got one piece in. I'd say, so we'll get up there in a minute, but I'll talk about most of it on the floor because I can sit. So I caught up to date with One Piece at volume 63. I'd say of 1 to 63, I managed to get about 40 to 45 volumes from this two pound bookstore. Yeah. Yeah, so when people are like, oh, One Piece, there's 100 volumes, how did you pick up all, how could you commit? Well, first off, there weren't 100 volumes when I started collecting. I think when I started, it was just in the 50s. And then, of course, I got a whole chunk of it for £2 a volume. So it wasn't that horrific. I'd go in after school, like, pretty much daily, and just see if they'd gotten any new ones in. And they were, like, plastic wrapped and, like, with stickers and stuff in. It was amazing. Yeah, so the very first volume I picked up and read was One Piece 24. I think I can remember the first ones I had. I had 24, I had... I should know. 24, 37, or 36. No, we'll go up. I can't remember. I <laughs> have to say, I couldn't remember and then I can't. Um, but, like, I remember reading, like volume 37 and then I read volume 53 and there's quite a big jump and I remember at one point I was reading and I'm like who's this skeleton guy where's he come from because like I had no volumes of Thriller Bark so I'd completely skipped over Brooke joining the crew and I was like I don't know who this guy is where's he come from completely skipped over like um, oh what's his name Frankie Frankie just appeared as well who's he and oh my gosh so confused because this is the first volume I read and Robin is obviously here so when I started and like reading it properly and I met Robin like as you're meant to I was like why is she the enemy she's part of the straw crew I don't understand yeah I have learned my mistakes it was a hilarious way to read especially going from like the beginning of Skypea arc to mid end of Skypea to halfway through Water 7 to Luffy was in Impel Down trying to escape to save Ace and I'm like this is Quite, a, quite an adventure. <laughs> so I I was picking these up like so randomly. So I think I got the first um, couple as Christmas presents from a friend. And then I think all the way... I so I got a mix of them two pounds and a mix of three for two. Uh, this, I've got a couple of gold ones. I did have a gold uh, volume 10, but my partner binned it because it was so 
so misprinted it was missing i think two chapters in it and it was like miss like upside down as well way back when i let him borrow my one piece and as a thank you he replaced some of my like not very good volumes and he disposed of them which in hindsight i don't really care to be fair but the gold foil ones are neat so i think i've got a gold foil i've got a gold foil three i've got a gold foil 11 and 13 and 19 oh and 22 so they'll have all been bought for second hand i remember the very last volume i needed to actually not have a gap in my series was 23 and i think i then was up to like the mid 50s and then i just needed to get some from forbidden planet to be up to date but this was like the last one to buy so it took me ages to find out how this arc ended because i did kind of read the volumes as i got them because I was like 15, 16, and I was like, why not? It'll be fun. I was just so confused <laughs> in hindsight. Yep, so we got a whole bunch of One Piece. 38, it was 38 that I had. Oh, 24, 38. Did I have any of those? No. 24, 38, and then, oh no, it was 56. This one, this is the one that I've had in my collection for absolutely ages. Read it loads of times, found it really fun. <laughs> I also really love the um, Sabodi, Sabodi arc, which isn't very long, but really, really enjoy it. I have no idea if this arc is liked or not. I really, really like the volumes that mark the end of arcs, because you get like parties and stuff. So volume 23, volume 45, volume 50, also 61, which marks the time skip slash reunion post time skip also love that it's the same as volume one but up to date oh my gosh very much love one piece so yeah this is the volume when i was i caught up to date and i very much remember it, it was august i was in london with a friend it was just before we started our a levels and i managed to pick this up in forbidden planet <sighs> and i remember <laughs> she because she didn't read manga or anything and i grabbed this and she was like oh is that the sort of thing you read? <laughs> ah, yes. And then we have a bunch more One Piece and we have all the way up to volume 100. Now, I was really upset because I went, I've been to a lot of manga stores the past week and I went to a manga store that was like, it had manga in the back room and it was dingy and dark and it was mostly a comic store and they had One Piece 101 and then I went into Leeds the next day and neither Travelling Man nor Forbidden Planet had One Piece 101 I was like, damn it, I wanted to get it as 3 for 2 but I'm hoping to hold out and maybe grab it um, as part of the Travelling Man Boxing Day sales which I really really hope they do this year but oh my gosh, the fact that One Piece has hit 100 volumes is just absolutely amazing and I can't believe it's taken 10 years from me getting up to date to, to <laughs> getting to 100. I am so excited to see more of the Wano arc. I just hear amazing things. Absolutely love One Piece, absolutely adore it, would definitely recommend but I, I, I feel like it's hard to recommend a series that is less long. Like if you do go it, go for the box sets, go for the box sets. I don't think you'd be able to find the amazing deal I did. I don't think even that £2 store is even around. I think it closed during my A-levels as well. Maybe I bankrupted them with my other manga. And then I've also got the Sanji book, which I need to make something out of. One Piece is like up there tied for favourite series with Komi, to be fair. Okay, we also have three volumes of One Piece in French. So a friend of mine, so friends of mine at school didn't read manga, they didn't really get it, but they were very lovely and supportive, like the friend who bought me Full Metal Alchemist. And I had a friend who did French and as part of, I think, one that was at A-level or GCSE, they went to France for a week and they had to work in a French store and she got placed in a comic book store she didn't give a shit about comics in the slightest, except she really liked they had a glass of wine at the end of the day. That was the only thing I remember her telling me. <laughs> um, but she did pick up some One Piece in French for me as Christmas presents, and it's really, really fun comparing, like, having this open and the English version open and looking at them. And what I've decided to do is, when I do start travelling a bit more, I'd really love to pick up volume one of One Piece in the language of whatever country I go to. I feel One Piece is popular enough, it's likely to be in a lot of languages. But I, I, that does excite me, and then I'll, I'll have them all next to each other on here. Next we have One Punch Man! One... 
to 24 and that is up to date i haven't read 24 yet not had it that long really enjoy one piece it's great ah one piece i do still love one piece it's on the mind i love one punch man as well um and i find that the my only issue as it is with a lot of series it doesn't release particularly often which means that i forget the story pretty easily especially since at the moment these volumes at least we've gotten a lot of like action and fighty stuff and I just keep forgetting what's happening and I only really remember what's happening by the end of the volume I'm like, oh yeah, this is- oh, I'm, I'm, I'm done, okay do really like it, maybe more to binge though I I think it went on hiatus and like that hiatus is like kind of just finished filtering through to English print so maybe we'll get them a bit faster now also don't know if that's true or not next we have Satoshi Khan's Opus and this is, I believe, complete I think this is it Maybe? I believe the author passed away, so I can't remember if this is it or he didn't get a chance to finish it. My partner's read it, this is something he was really interested in reading, and he really, really enjoyed it. Oh, tragically died, but he did also write this. So I believe the premise is the character ends up in their own artwork, in their own story, and they're trying to navigate it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of... Um, that one quest in Oblivion where you have to go into a guy's painting and fight off ogres with a paintbrush for some reason. I haven't read it yet, but my, my partner was keen. I picked it up mainly for him and he was like, maybe you should read it too. And I was like, oh, okay then. Okay, next we have Orange Omnibus 1 and Orange Omnibus 2. So kind of complete, except I know there is a future volume out in English, which I don't have. And also there's been as some other volumes printed in Japanese. I don't think they're out in English yet, or if at all, I don't know. I remember starting to watch some of the anime while I was at uni and I didn't particularly enjoy it and then I saw a whole bunch of people say great things about it and I decided to try picking it up, though that was quite a few years ago and I have since read the other English series by the author which is Dreaming Sun and I've already said about how much I don't like that. So I'm a bit nervous about reading it now but I do think people generally say Orange is better than Dreaming Sun. As we have Orisama Teacher, so we've- oh, we've got a clear run. 1 to 9, 12, 15, 16, 18, 22. So I believe the series is complete now. Somewhere in the late 20s, maybe 30 volumes. It is a high school romance. I don't know much more about this. I've got, I think, all of these volumes I've picked up secondhand or even 50% off somewhere. I think, I'll, I think it's another one. I'm just going to try and have fun collecting it and then I'll read it when I've got all of the volumes just because it's so sporadic about which shoujo beach volumes you can pick up you have no idea how long it'll take you to find that volume 10, 14, 17 so I'll just, I'll just hold off for now but still pick it up and next we have Orient 1 to 4 and 5 to 9 and 11 so I pre-ordered 11 from Blackwells because they had it for cheaper than 3 for 2 uh, I believe I'm getting volume 10 for Christmas and I've pre-ordered a whole bunch more from Forbidden Planet. So this is the same series, same series, same author as Magi, Meiji, Magi, um, except instead of Middle Eastern, Arabian Nights, it is Samurai. From what I can tell, so far there's quite a lot of similar themes except the main character is less of a child, still a child. And they've got really major kick-ass swords that are like massive and spiky and great. I've been enjoying the series, it's not particularly... I don't think it's like... I don't know how to describe it. It's not intense, but it is. I mean, it's all very shonen battle-y stuff, but it's not It's not a hard read still. It's quite light. I've been enjoying it. I really found binging a bunch of volumes helped me get into it, particularly because I was like around a battle um, arc. So binging through it helped me not forget what was happening between volumes. I think the covers are absolutely gorgeous. This is such a gorgeous cover. I think definitely be better than the other series by this artist, which I'm not going to try and say again because I can never say it right. Just wish it wasn't all red spines. Okay, next we have Us and Idol 1, 2, and 4. These were all bought secondhand for about 50% off. Basic premise is it is these guys start an idol group, but they're all old. <laughs> I think how old are they again? 36! Oof, oof practically a skeleton at that point sorry uh, so yeah that's the premise I found volume one okay I I found it a bit I, just, I think it was I don't know it was all very light-hearted very jolly very lovely everyone was like supportive of each other 
I don't know why I didn't get into it. I don't know why I didn't get into it. It just didn't really. But I've only read the first volume. I think six is out now, so I am a bit behind. I'm missing three and five and six. Next we have Attack at Elf 1, 2 and 4. I think all bought half price on Blackwells or on sale. I definitely got this on sale. How do I know if it's on sale? I definitely got it on sale. Anyway, definitely got these all half price. I don't know what it's about, I haven't started reading it yet. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But I really wanted to pick it up when I saw like the promo shot and she's like holding a switch. I'm like, yes, I want it. From another world! Is this an isekai? And next we have Otherworldly Isekai Nobu 1 to 5. Very behind, I think there's 10 or 11 out. Absolutely love this series, loads. Would definitely recommend, however, it's very expensive. It is Udon Entertainment, it has French flaps. Does it have French flaps? I think it has French flaps. Yeah, it's got French flaps. So basically, it's actually kind of similar to that um, series, My Dungeon, My Room is a Dungeon Rest Stop, where I'll leave it out a bit where out of one door it pops out into Monday Tokyo and out the other door it pops out into this like fantasy Germanic kind of village from many years ago. And these people come in from this village and every chapter kind of follows a different person coming in and ordering some food and the Izakaya is just run by a guy who we can see just behind the counter here and this waitress and it's just really wholesome and lovely and about characters trying food they normally wouldn't because a lot of things like running water and fresh fish just aren't available in the sort of village that this is. It's just lovely. <laughs> it's, not, it's got lots of nice food, it's an isekai, it's wholesome. Really love the series. I don't think I've seen, like, this is probably one of the times where, like, a lot of the time I'm like, I don't think I've seen many people see this, but I've seen one or two. I'm not sure I've seen anyone else with this series, but maybe it is, it isn't that common. I don't see it in store, like, at all, ever, maybe once or twice, and it's a very expensive, like, it usually retails even before the price jumps for, like, $13.99. It's probably more now, which is really upsetting. So, I really want to try and get up to date before the prices get too silly. As we have the other side of Secret 1 to 3, I don't know if this is up to date or complete. This is a series my partner's been reading. I don't know if he finished reading it. He said volume 1 wasn't that great and then we found 2 and 3 discounted. So we got those for him, but I don't think he's finished reading it. Other side, Picnic 1. I haven't read it. I picked it up secondhand again for about £5. I think it's a GL and I think there's a second volume out but I don't want to pay full price, so I haven't read it yet. So we've got the other world's books depend on the bean counter 1 and 2. I was impressed that these both came out at the same time. I think it just took them, or at least in the UK they did, took them so long to get out that they just released them both at the same time. It is an isekai. I believe it's a BL isekai, and I haven't got around to reading it yet. I really like the grey. This is a lovely shade of grey, if you can say that about grey. Next we have Ultimate Mania 1 and 2, and this is the series complete. I got both of these secondhand. It is kind of an Otome series where this woman starts working at a company that releases like mobile Otome games and it kind of is almost like an Otome romance in itself with like the guy who produces them, the guy that writes the scripts, the guy that devs it, the guy that draws it, that's pretty much who all these dudes are. And that's about it. Kind to get a few chapters with each of the guys. I don't think she really chooses one by the end, maybe can't fully remember. It was it was a fun read. I did enjoy reading it. If you want to read a short Otome series, I would recommend that one. Our Dreams at Dusk 1 to 3. I haven't started reading it because it's only a four volume series and I'm missing four volume four. I hear really mixed things about this. When I started picking this up um, a couple of years ago, I'd heard only good things and about how wonderful the representation was. And I feel more recently, all I hear about how is how not very good the representation is and I'm like oh no which way round is it I don't know I do like the spines I think the covers I love the like how they use a color on each volume yeah next we have our last crusade or the rise of a new world volume one plastic wrapped because I bought this in um Japan craft in London and I haven't read it yet I bought my partner I think a light novel from this so we need to see comparisons it's so loud. Uh, Our Not So Lonely Planet Travel Guide 1 and 2. I haven't started reading this, but I really want to. I hear so many people say how wonderful and lighthearted this is. I believe a third one is out and it's 
orange. Very happy that uh happy. Oh my gosh, my words. I've been talking too much. One piece, one piece, one piece. I think volume three is orange, and yeah, I am a sucker for colourful spines. Okay, our teachers are dating two and three. Both of these I got on black oh goodness. Both of these I got on Black Quills for half price. I'm missing one and four. I think it's complete at four. Uh GL series between teachers I believe <laughs> okay next we have Uran High School host club 1 to 9 and 10 to 18 that is complete I picked this up before lockdown I bought a lot of them secondhand a lot of them secondhand you can tell especially with volume 4 it's actually quite damaged actually I could probably get some of that sticker off but it's definitely sun damaged so it's all faded uh, I yeah I think I got all of them for like two three pounds secondhand and then I had to buy like the last three in store at that time. Really like who run High School House Club. I remember watching some of the anime with a friend at uni and I absolutely loved the twins. I loved the episode where the twins were fighting and just kept throwing things at each other and it was so silly. It did definitely get way more serious towards the end but obviously it had to. I really really enjoy it and I really enjoy remembering thinking about watching it at uni. None of those words made sense. I like Uran. I think that's what I was trying to say. Okay, alphabetically, next we have Outbride Beauty and the Beast 1 and 2, and that's up to date. This was the first series published by the Steamship in the Steamship imprint by Sam Z's, suggesting it is a steamy title. Though, technically, this series is actually a shoujo. Though, reading it, you're like, oh my god, how is this a shoujo? Christ, what young girls are reading this? So, basically, our main character. Uh, she's going home, walking home from high school and it looks like she's getting hit by a truck and when she wakes up she's surrounded by all these like mythical looking guys and she's told that yeah it's a thousand years in the future, you're the last human left. Basically you need to breed with us so we can produce something to defeat a demon. And then they're like, are you ready? <laughs> and that's about it, that's like literally the premise, like, yep, everyone's dead, except for you, and now have our babies. It's, oh my god. And then there's a whole, like, there's a thing, a, a, a gas in the air or something in the air that's slowly killing her, but it's okay if she snogs the guy, she'll be fine for a while. Ah! And also, it's super dubious about how old she is. They just say what year of high school she's in, which makes it mean she's either 15 or 16. There's, oh, she definitely, and, and the scenes where there's definitely she is not happy. She keeps crying because obviously it's like all oh, family and friends are dead. Everyone's dead and she just can't stop crying. They're like, come on, come on. Spread your legs. Oh dear. Definitely, definitely dubious. Okay, next we have Overlord. Do we have a clear run? We're 1 to 6, 8, 9, 11, 12, 14. So missing 7, 10, and 13. I'm not sure if I'm up to date. 15 might be out. So Overlord, I have read up to, I think, 4. And then I caught up to where my partner was reading his light novels. Overlord is like his favourite light novel series at the moment. He he is now like up to date. I think he's like just finished light novel 14. So he's now way ahead of me. But I've just not gotten back into it. Is an isekai. A guy is playing a game and it's being shut down. And he decides to sit and sit it, sit it out because he has some really good memories. He used to play with a lot of people but a lot of them don't log in anymore and it's, so it's mostly just him and he's sitting around and he's waiting and it ticks past midnight and he's like why am I still in the game? And, and then he can't log out and everything's suddenly a lot more real. Yeah, that's kind of it. It's quite... He, he's not like a great person in the story but it's good. It is good. Next we have Overlord the Undead King O7. Now this was a mistake buy, so on Blackwells it listed Overlord 7 at half price and I was like, oh, I'm missing volume 7, yay! And then it arrived and it was the spin-off and I was like, bollocks, at least I don't have it still. And in hindsight it did have the picture for the cover of this volume, but it just said Overlord 7 in the, like, title on the page. If I went into like detailed, into like the product description, it, it did actually say this, but just like scrolling through the main page, it, it didn't. I was like, bollocks, damn it, at least it's not a duplicate. <sighs> uh, next, Pandora Hearts 1 and 2, got these second hand and then learnt that it's very hard to find. So I've put off trying to pick up any more until they do more reprints. I think they are doing reprints, just 
obviously it's going to take a year and a day to make their way over to the UK. Next we have Paradise Kiss, the, the, the chunky Omni version, which was also gifted to me by Himika when we did our exchange. As you can see, I got halfway through and then I was like, I'm taking a break to read some other stuff. And that was a year and a half ago. I actually did start vlogging me reading, like every like couple of chapters I just like record my thoughts and stuff and then I forgot to read anymore. I do have that footage still somewhere, I just don't really know what to do with it because it's, I mean I might continue it on and just be shameful about it. And next we have Paradise, Parallel Paradise 1 to 11, this is up to date, this is an isekai, it is, a, a, yeah, look, in, look at that. Basically, a guy's isekai into a world where there are no men, all women. All women will die by the age of 20 unless they have mated. So, of course, it is his moral obligation to mate with as many women as possible. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just so weird, and like they just sort of melt whenever he touches them, and like they just get so sweaty. It's not like it's really weird. Like the actual story and like what's happening with the world and why he's been isekai'd and why the girls die and stuff. There's like probably some of the most story around why he's been isekai'd out of any isekai I've read, but like the rest of it is really gross. <laughs> really, really gross. So I would be dubious to recommend this to anyone but the most hardcore of pervs, to be honest. Yeah. Also nice rainbow spines. Uh, and I am going to leave Parasite for the next one because it goes on to the next shelf.